So a little while ago, Elvis Presley got his own feature-length movie. I was honestly not expecting much when I saw the trailers for this thing in theaters. To me, it looked like just another one of those middling biopic movies we've been getting forever, akin to something like Bohemian Rhapsody from a few years ago. But I was completely wrong. Elvis is a surprisingly strong movie and deserves all of the praise that it gets. The way Elvis differs from the more traditional biopic flick is that it's not strictly about Elvis. It could be argued Elvis isn't even the main character of the film, even though he is, but rather his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. The Colonel is Elvis's sleazy con manager who, throughout the film, constantly manipulates Elvis to do what's in his own best interest rather than Elvis's. This movie isn't just the story of Elvis. It's the story of Elvis and his relationship with the Colonel. And I think that dynamic works really well and makes this movie feel like it has an actual story between characters. It's not just going through Elvis's greatest hits collection, though admittedly that does happen, but it almost always has some kind of significance to the plot. Elvis, as a character, or as a person, really, was very interesting. At the time, white people generally did not experience traditional rock and roll music. But Elvis grew around African American people. And because of this, he learned to embrace their music and their culture, which he exhibits in his music. Rock and roll was such a culture shock for white America that the media slandered Elvis and tried to make him conform to what they wanted him to be. But Presley was not the type to fit the mold producers wanted him to fill. And he rebelled against the system. He was basically a hippie. It makes for a really likable and relatable protagonist that the audience can really connect with. Because most of us want to be our own person, but social roles and people around us generally prevent us from reaching our true potential. I, I know, that's very deep. Anyway, the performances carry this movie. Austin Butler absolutely nails it out of the park with his portrayal of Elvis. Apparently after filming, Austin Butler felt so disconnected with his true self because he was so immersed in the character of Elvis. Now, I generally think... Shut up. I generally think method acting is a pretty strange and over-the-top way of performing, as it has a reputation of going a bit far in most cases. I think Nick Cage puts it the best, and I quote here. There is a fine line between the method actor and the schizophrenic. Jared Leto. Anyway, I think in this case, Butler's performance shows that in some instances, method acting can lead to truly chilling performances. The voice, the way he moves, the way he sings are all so distinctly Elvis. I can confidently say that Butler's portrayal of Elvis is by far the strongest element of this movie. And Butler deserves some kind of award for his performance. On the other side of that coin though, I didn't really like Tom Hanks in this. I thought he was kinda hamming it up most of the time, and his accent was odd. I don't know, maybe that's authentic to who the Colonel actually was, or maybe Tom Hanks just doesn't make a good villain. He's not generally the type to play that kind of character. I still think the character of the Colonel was interesting, I just thought the portrayal was off. The fat suit and makeup were very convincing though. Another thing I thought was off was the editing. The editing of this movie made me want to throw up in some cases. There's so many quick cuts and zooms throughout the entire thing, it's nauseating. For example, there is this one scene where Elvis is all angry and he's pouty and he's moody and whatever. So he goes out to his car to drive away. But the cuts they use to get him there make it feel like I'm having a stroke. It is disgusting to watch. Maybe that's just me, but ugh. There's also some very questionable music choices as well. They play in completely random spots throughout the movie. Like at one point, Doja Cat starts playing in the middle of a scene for no real reason at all. It's an Elvis movie. The music should be Elvis music. I didn't think that really needed to be stated, but here we are. Anyway, this movie is also really long, like 40 minutes too long in my opinion, which is weird to say because the editing jumps from one thing to another so fast, at least in the beginning of the movie it does. It feels like it doesn't give us a chance to breathe while also being really 
slow paced. It's a weird thing to say, I know. It admittedly gets better towards the end, but I feel some of the super quick cut scenes at the beginning could have been removed completely. But that's just me. I feel like I've been ragging on this movie a bit too much at this point, so let's talk about something positive. Elvis is a beautiful movie. The cinematography and colors are all top notch. I was watching some behind the scenes stuff and one of the lead production designers and they talked about how they used color to define the three decades that the movie took place in. The 50s were a lot drabber and duller compared to the 60s and 70s when Elvis's career became huge. It was all done masterfully in my opinion. And whenever a movie is eye candy to look at, I have to at least mention it because I feel the technical aspects of making movies look as well as they do in this case are drastically underappreciated. Okay, now back to the kind of negative stuff. A movie like this can't be talked about without reviewing the authenticity of the events that happen in the film. This is a film about a real person's life after all. The events should have at least some basis in fact. Now, I've always liked Elvis's music and I know a pretty good amount of his songs, but going into this movie, I knew next to nothing about his personal life, other than that he died of supposed drug overdose on the toilet, which isn't even in the movie, might I add. And that's pretty much the extent of it. So me, knowing pretty much nothing about the life of Elvis going into this, I had a pretty good idea of what scenes were exaggerated for entertainment purposes, as things like that just don't happen in real life. And for the most part, I was right. I did some research after the fact, and the movie is generally pretty faithful to the major events that happened in Elvis' life surrounding the Colonel. But of course, there are some pretty major differences. I'm gonna preface this part by saying major spoilers for the Elvis movie. Go out and watch it if you haven't, and then come back to this part of the video. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, now that that's out of the way, there are two sizable discrepancies between the fiction of the film and the reality of life that I wanna talk about. One, Elvis never fired the Colonel on stage and went out in a blazing glory. In reality, he never even knew the Colonel was an illegal immigrant. And number two, Elvis also never incites riots over the quote unquote new Elvis events of the Memphis charity concert. According to Bart Herb Smith, Elvis's then girlfriend at the time, who was at the real concert said, and I quote, the concert at Russwood Park was absolutely nothing like it was in the movie, not even near accurate, and no awful riots as shown. Though it is true, Elvis said, but in the end you gotta listen to yourself. So I want you to know those New York people ain't gonna change me none. In reality, the events of the concert were much tamer than what we saw in the film. Now, those are just two of the biggest examples that I could find, but the list goes on and on if you wanna look further into it. I just didn't wanna make this video too long. Now, I'm generally of the mind that decisions like these are made purely for entertainment purposes, and that's fine. I understand why some people would be upset at the inaccuracies, but it can't be denied that the movie would be a hell of a lot less entertaining without said inaccuracies. If you want cold, hard facts, go watch a documentary on Elvis. Not a $100 million movie. These blockbusters are meant to be concise and easy to understand for the average Joe who doesn't know anything about Elvis. And I feel that was done to a satisfying enough degree in this movie, as I, myself, didn't really know anything about Elvis before viewing. Overall, though I feel like I did point out a lot of the negatives in this, I really did like Elvis. It was a much better time than I was anticipating. It's not perfect by any means, but I feel it's solidly entertaining to watch. It's shot really well and is absolute eye candy with its colors. It has great performances and a very personal story between two very flawed men. I would highly recommend it. It's on streaming now. Go watch it. Okay, thanks. Bye.